So what you're looking at right here is pinata wrapping paper. It was my birthday almost three weeks ago, and we still have almost all of the decorations up. Don't judge me. What we do have today, though, this massive package here, which has to be close to 10 pounds, honestly. In 2022, I spent almost $30,000 on Japanese video games. Yes, that is $30,000. I calculated my spreadsheets. Uh, it's insane. So I've been taking it a little bit easier in 2023 with the Japanese video games game buying but i finally had some inspiration i had some new stuff i was looking for so we have another box to unbox this is courtesy of buy e which if you do not know about buying japanese video games buy e is like a middleman service you can then shop on yahoo japan auctions mercari you send all the stuff to the warehouse and then they ship it to you and remember to say thank you to every single patron who helps support the channel i can't do this without you guys hit the like button and let's dig into this package so here's what it looks like. We just got a whole bunch of bubble wrap stuff in here. I did pay the extra $15 for protective packaging, which is fully worth it. I, I highly recommend you always spend the 15 bucks. As you can see, they do actually use quite a bit of bubble wrap in there. So there's everything. And now get rid of this box. So we're starting off with a cool combo bundle here. Dragon Quest VIII plus the guidebook. Let me just get it out of here so we can see it better. Factory sealed copy of the game, of course. Everything today is basically going to be factory sealed. But this game is quite cheap out of Japan, which is awesome because it might be my favorite game in the entire series. And I wanted it because it also came with this insane book here, which I think is just the guidebook for Dragon Quest VIII. And I haven't handled a Japanese book in forever because I forgot you read it in the reverse way. That, that'll never not trip me out. Of course, it's in Japanese, so I can't read it. But this is just the type of thing where you display it next to the game and it looks awesome. Next up here is arguably my favorite item in the whole package I got. I bought this on a whim. I don't even know how big it is. We're talking classic Super Mario Kart goodness here. Here, let me just wait. Let's wait. Get the full grand reveal. Look at this. A Super Mario Kart towel, but I, I mean, let's be honest. This is like a tea towel. Put it on my body here for actual frame of reference. I thought it was going to be a full-size towel, not, not like a dishcloth. And we will equip this Super Mario Kart towel like this. <laughs> this thing is freaking awesome. This is 10 or 15 bucks. Extremely well spent on this. Next up here, we have one of my favorite games ever made. And I bought this hoping it was going to be a very, very nice copy of the game because I did pay up a bit compared to what you could get a copy for. So factory sealed copy here, Final Fantasy VIII. Like I said, one of the greatest games there is. And I just have to take it out of the plastic bag here and we can give it a quick look at the condition. Because seriously, if there's a crack or rip anything, then I grossly overpaid. Like this, this is perfect condition or bust kind of thing. Oh my god. I guess if it wasn't cracked beforehand, now it might be. Jesus Christ, I can't get it out of this bag. That was not okay. Got it out of the bag. And this game, I don't see anything any issues on the front. There's a little bit of dirt that can easily just be cleaned off. Doesn't look like I cracked the game. I mean, you guys, this looks really clean. I think it's a winner. Now, of course, I will send this off to get graded as well eventually. I wanted a mint copy for my collection. Most of the stuff I did buy here is for my collection. I still don't do a ton of Japanese reselling. Slowly but surely, I will start reselling stuff. Like I said, I spent an absolute ton on games in the past year, so I, I got to make some of that back. But this this one right here is going to be staying with me. This is, this is freaking awesome. Next up is a game here that I bought on a whim because it was pretty cheap and it was very anime. Big Dragon Ball Z fan over here. I picked up Battle Stadium Dawn, Battle Stadium D-O-N. I don't even remember what the official name is of the game. It's an anime fighting game. And like I said, it just has One Piece, Naruto and Dragon Ball Z on the cover. So I was in. I think it was like 15, 20 bucks to pick this up. Again, it just makes for a really cool game for the collection. I completely forgot about this. This is crazy. Okay. I think these cost me something like 10 or $15 per game, but we have, get ready for this, one copy, two copies, three copies, four copies, five copies, six copies, seven copies, factory sealed copies. 
of Skyward Sword. I am now the kingpin of Skyward Sword. If you want a Japanese copy of this game, you come to Greg. Like I said, for the price I paid for these, I think it was $15, $20. I'll have the actual amount edited in here on the video. It just seemed like a great thing to pick up. Like, okay, now I just own seven sealed copies of this game. I'll probably just sit on them for a bit, to be completely honest. Just throw them in a closet and forget about it. Because I don't think they necessarily have a lot of... This one's pretty ugly, Jesus. I don't think they have a lot of value right now anyway, but I'm not above being a dirty speculator. And now that I own seven sealed copies, you must refer to me as Skyward Greg in the comment section. Let me know how dumb this purchase is. It's starting to make sense why this package was so heavy. There, there's more games in here than I thought. Coming up next, we have something PlayStation 1 maybe? I can't get any of this tape. They got that real strong Japanese tape. Nothing like the North American brand here. This stuff is impossible. Oh, I thought this was the biggest one. This isn't the biggest game in the package, but this is a pretty cool one. We were just talking about this game in the last live stream here. We have a factory sealed copy of Tekken 3 on PlayStation 1. One of the best fighting games of this generation. Like not just on the PlayStation 1, Tekken 3 was incredible. Condition isn't amazing. There is a lot of scratching and stuff to the cellophane, but I don't see any cracks. So I, you really can't ask for much better than that. I was happy to pick it up because like I said, it's an incredible fighting game and it actually is one that I grew up playing. Next one here is the biggest gamble in the whole box. I, I don't know if this one is going to work out. What we have is an incredible, incredible item, no matter what. This is the Japanese Mario Kart 64 with controller. It's a big box bundle here. This thing is huge. Inside of here, it comes with that two-tone controller. So this is an incredible bundle, no matter what. And the outside of this box is open. I knew it was. So that isn't a big issue. We can go ahead and look inside of here. What I'm hoping is that the Mario Kart game inside of here has never been opened. So inside here, you can see the controller is still in the wrap. I'm pretty sure the controller is brand new. Uh, it is. It still has its factory twist tie on it. So the controller itself brand new. This is a really good start. Now the game is what we are looking for here. What we're going to look at is the hinge on this game. We need it to look like it has never been opened. As far as I'm seeing you guys, it doesn't actually look like it's been opened before. It's super hard to tell because the top of the box is also white. So any kind of creasing doesn't show up well. I think we might actually have a winner here. The condition on it, of course, is crisp. It's mint. It's been, it's been inside the big box its whole life, right? This thing looks immaculate. Obviously, buying a North American factory sealed copy is extremely expensive now. So I've personally started pivoting to some of the Japanese copies of these games, which I think are honestly just as cool. And it cost me a lot of a lot less. And that's a lot of the fun I've been having with Japanese game collecting. Obviously, last year I went kind of crazy with it, but that's because there's so much incredible stuff. And it just, it's so much better priced compared to North American stuff. I, I can't even shove this back in there. I'm just gonna have to keep it out of there for now. Like I said, I think it's a winner. I will send that off for grading as well. And hopefully they agree that it's never been opened. N64 stuff did not have factory seals. That does not exist. So if you want to get brand new games like that, you have to get them unopened and it's really hard and it's really annoying and a lot of sellers will lie to you about if it's been opened or not and I have lost money in the past gambling on games being unopened. It's getting a little bit sweaty in here with this Japanese unboxing. I was making fun of this towel earlier but whew, it is heating me up. We're almost done. We're down to the final-ish games here. We'll start off with this little Famicom one. I think I've unboxed one of these on the camera before. Really early games on Famicom came in these super small purple boxes and I'm sure some of you already saw what game it is there. I'll just take it out of the little baggie so I can show you better. An original copy of Duck Hunt for the Famicom. Super small box. You can see here with my hand like these are really small. It's really weird because sometimes you can find games like Duck Hunt and you'd think oh my god the original Duck Hunt that's so old that has to be so rare in brand new condition but for whatever reason some Japanese sellers have like cases of this. Like I would call this game very common even in brand new unopened state. It's kind of weird like that. With Japanese games, it's either very rare and very hard to find, kind of like that Mario Kart 64, like that is not easy to find, or it's super common like this, where you can just go on 
Yahoo Japan auctions and buy one of these. It costs like 70 to $100 still, but there will always be one available for you. I just did a bit of reorganizing because we're down to the final few games here. And this one is actually like what got me back looking for Japanese games in the first place. And it only cost me $20. We have here a game from a series that I'm sure almost all of you are going to know. But in North America, we didn't get, I, I, I don't think we got any games released for this series, like zero. So what we have here is a factory sealed copy on Nintendo DS of Death Note. Look at that. There are three of them that got released in Japan. I now own two of them. So this is the second one I've gotten. I think some of these do have English translation patches, but I, again, I would need to check. It, it's been months since I did my actual research into these. You know what I mean? I always like go down my rabbit hole of research and then I go into the finding phase and it took months for any of these to pop up. It's not that they're expensive and they might not even be rare, but nobody posts factory sealed copies on Yahoo Japan. So I've been looking for about three or four months now and I've been able to get two of them. There's one more I still need to get. Hopefully it will also be super cheap and then I'll have the series of Death Note games, which I just think is fantastic. So next up is something that's a lot more expensive, probably 10 times more I paid for this game, which is also really cool, don't get me wrong, but not as cool as Death Note. If you guys remember earlier, we had a factory sealed copy of Tekken 3. Now we're going a little bit more intense with a factory sealed copy of just get it out of here. Tekken 1 on original PlayStation. Much more valuable, much more harder to find, much more sought after, whatever word you want to use. The original Tekken in the series is a quite the collector item these days. Now, the biggest issue with this, and I mean, it looks fantastic, right? Beautiful condition as far as I can tell. Because Tekken 1 does have such value, it's also a game that people do target for reseals and fakes. So even on here, you can see that it has the PlayStation strip around the bottom. Obviously, Obviously, that's a fantastic sign, right? If you don't see a PlayStation strip, it's very easy to say it's fake. But Japanese counterfeiters will also fake the strip. You can reseal games top bottom. You can leave the strip intact. So fakes do exist that use the strip. I, I, unfortunately, I'm just not an expert enough to look at this and be like, oh, this is 100% real. I really, really hope it is because this was more expensive. Like don't shop in Japan and think that everything is authentic. Yahoo Japan, Mercari, it has just as many scams, fakes, all that stuff as you're going to find on North American eBay. So do be careful if you decide to start hunting for Japan stuff. Next up is another cheap one so I can actually be excited about it because I can feel very confident it's real and I don't have to feel bad if it's not. Dragon Ball Raging Blast Japanese version. The Japanese version actually has a completely different back art than the North American version for some reason. I'm pretty sure the front of the game looks almost exactly the same but this was like $20. Picked it up for the Dragon Ball Z collection. Why not? I often find myself happier and more excited for the $20 purchases versus the ones that are like two or $300. This is fun. That's scary. And moving more into the realm of scary again, we have an original Japanese copy of one of the greatest fighting games ever made. I mean, we already have Tekken here, right? Why not follow it up with some Street Fighter 2? And this game also, like the Mario Kart 64, never came factory sealed. So what we're hoping for again is that the hinge of the game will not show any signs of it being open. And weirdly enough, again, Street Fighter 2 Japanese version here is quite available. There's a lot of copies out there floating around. It does have some price attached to it, but it's not necessarily rare. And looking at the hinge on this game, it's super easy to tell because this one is gold colored. Looking at the hinge, this looks perfect. So we've had Tekken Street Fighter 2, and right now there is another amazing fighting game coming up. It's kind of funny because I wouldn't even call myself like a massive fighting game buff. Obviously, I've played most of them. Like, I can play Street Fighter. I play Ken, but I don't like, like, I don't grind fighting games. I'm much more into FPS and other genres, RPGs. Fighting games have always been like one of the side games that I play. But for whatever reason, this order just happened to be fighting games galore. <laughs> fighting games and Skyward Sword are the theme of this unboxing. So with this one, we're going back to PlayStation 1. And what we have is a factory sealed copy of Marvel Super Heroes. One of the games that came a bit earlier before the series became Marvel vs. Capcom. And Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is one of my favorite fighting games period. Absolutely love it. I've played these earlier games just a little bit. Even Marvel vs. Capcom 1, I've played like 
twice. But for the fighting game collection, this is just really, really cool. And this also did have some value attached to it. So again, much like the Tekken game, I'm excited for it. This is super, super cool. And everything looks authentic about it. But until I have it graded and it's all locked in, I, I just have that little bit of fear, you know? And the final package we have here is actually a bundle of games. There were four games listed for PlayStation 1 again, but they had an awful title. It was like PlayStation Lot or something. But all the games were brand new, factory sealed. And inside of here, there was actually one game that I wanted. And then three other games that I frankly do not care about, but take it out of the little plastic container here. And the funny thing about this bundle here is uh, it's North American. These are not Japanese games in this one. I went to a Japanese website and used a Japanese middleman to buy North American video games. Explain that one to me. We'll start off with this. We have All-Star Slam and Dodgeball. An absolute beauty. What a grail of a game. I, I, I don't think this has any value, actually. Like, close to zero. The next game is a little bit cooler, but uh, still, I don't think there's any value, and it, it's cracked on the front of the case, so. Here's the Land Before Time. Ooh! Factory sealed land before time. Very cool. Very cool. The next one I think actually does have a little bit of value. Like, like not a lot or anything, but it is Rayman. This is Rayman Rush, which is a Rayman racing game, I believe. I've never played it myself. I did grow up playing Rayman 2, so I'm a little bit familiar with the series, but Rayman was never a series that I stuck around with. We played Rayman 2 on the N64, and then we just didn't care. Like, me and my brother just moved on. And now here's the game that I actually cared about in this bundle. And on the front of the case, I don't see any cracks, so that's a decent start. It is ripped on the side, but Black Label Final Fantasy IX. Oh man, there's like multiple rips on the front of the game, so not going to get a fantastic grade on this game, but the price was good enough to justify this gamble. If I can even resell these games over here for a little bit of money to help pay off this Final Fantasy IX, like, we are sitting pretty. Overall, with this unboxing, I, I think everything went great. My biggest fear is that copy of Tekken, which which is a game that is known to have a lot of fakes. So as long as Tekken works out, we are sitting pretty. And my next Japanese unboxing will be once I find the next Death Note game. So it might be a month from now, it might be three months from now, but make sure to subscribe for more videos, hit the like button before you go, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.